Because for the moment I don't have a project here in the late and nothing special to do, I thought it's maybe a good idea to clean the way wipers. I think cleaning these things is never a waste of time. And at the same time check if it's possible to fix the line making things problem I have as you can see here on my tap wrench. When I take light cuts on a slow feed, that's what this lathe does. There is some movement in the carriage and I would like to see if it's possible to fix it. So let's give this thing a touch with the dial indicator and see if we can find something. I took all the way wipers off and I loosened these little blocks here that hooks below the bed of the lathe to keep the whole thing in place. And it's a horror story. Normally this thing should stay in place because of gravity, right? These hooks here prevent it from lifting but from its own weight it stays down normally. And this V thing here should prevent it from moving left and right. But it doesn't. And there is another problem. This is a one tenth of a millimeter feeler gauge. Here we go. Easy peasy. Here we go. That's not good. I installed my indicator on the carriage of course. On the reversed V thing here. And this little part of course has almost no wear. Let's sweep a little bit. And this part of course has the most wear. I think there's not much we can do about this. And of course for the moment it's a little bit pointless to take this kind of measurements. As long as the carriage is moving left and right and twisting we can take right measurements. Ok, let's take the thing apart and see what we can do about it. I just took off the other side clamp uh, thing system here that comes below that holds the carriage down of course on the other rail with this surface here. And I see that this surface is nice and shiny. Which means this surface was rubbing on the side of the bed. So it pulled the whole carriage this way. It's not supposed to do this. It's this reversed V that keeps the carriage in, in place. Not this one. This one only prevents it from lifting. What I also think is a little bit bizarre is that this part doesn't have locating pins or positioning system. I don't know. If you put the bolt in, of course there is some play. Which means, if we check it here on the sketch, this part I show you comes here. Right? With the bolts. The position is not fixed. So my idea is when I'm gonna reinstall the thing is to use some shims. Put a shim between the bed and this part. Falling out. Putting a shim here and when it's all nice and tight pull it out. So I will be sure that this part will not 
touch the bed. In the distance here, I can easily fix it with shims, a bit like this one, to regulate the height. I think that could work. Right! Here comes the shim. Now I'm sure my hook part here below doesn't touch because I can see the light on the other side. So that should be good. And there still is some movement. It's also rather hard to turn. But let's install the indicator again. It's getting a little bit better, a bit over one tenth of a millimeter. Before my shim system here, it was almost a half a millimeter. So it's getting better, but I'm not there yet. I will continue playing with uh, shims and try to fix it, and I'll bring you back when I have some results. So if I don't come back, I don't have results. Ok, I'm back. I think we're getting a little bit closer here. For the moment I have about 3 one hundredths of a millimeter side to side play. For the Imperials it's uh, more or less one foul. I think I can live with this. But of course there is now a new problem. In this hand wheel system that uh, you can't see, but I'm gonna change a little bit camera angle. Voilà. In this hand wheel system, there is of course a clutch. And because the thing is hard to turn now, the clutch sometimes disengages. <laughs> show what is happening, it doesn't do it. I will install the chuck and a cutting tool and make a cut and see what happens. Ok, all assembled, way wipers in place, a ton of oil everywhere, I have here a bolt no idea what steel it is, let's call it bolt steel. And there is of course way too much stick out, but I will take first a light roughing cut and after I will take a finishing cut with the high speed steel. Let's see what happens. <laughs> The finish on this thing is maybe not fantastic. Thank you. 
I have to stop because the shank of my cutting tool thin holder here is touching the workpiece. That's not good. It could well be that we're getting somewhere. When I feel the surface, of course, you can feel, I know, but when I feel the surface, it feels a little bit wavy. What I think is bizarre. I'm gonna take a second cut, so I will have the same radius over the whole length, because here, of course, now there's a little step. And then I can take measurements. Let's do. These diamond tool holders, I think they work great. That's a nice finish. I hope you don't mind I installed you on the headstock. Because for me it will make it a little bit easier to take measurements. Right. This one is 20 millimeters and 68 68 that is the same sixty nine Seventy one. There is a taper of three one hundredths of a millimeter. This side smaller than this side. And it used to be the other way around. The taper was like this this side bigger and this side smaller. So I think it's a win. When I used the mic to measure my part here. I felt that in some places there was a little bit of wobble in it. A micrometer is not supposed to do this. These two little surfaces are parallel to each other. So if you measure something parallel, this thing is rock solid. You can move it. So I had the idea to put my indicator on top of my freshly made part. And as you can see, I hope so, there is a little bit of wave in the surface. Now here we're talking about Two one hundredths of a millimeter is less than one thou for the imperials, but I think it's bizarre because the tool I'm using has a very small angle between the workpiece and the cutting tool, which is about one or two degrees, which means if my tool is moving into the workpiece, it will cut over a larger surface. So instead of making a ding in my workpiece, it will more make a something like this. Which means when the tool is moving left, it's gonna leave a much nicer surface. 
but because I would like to make measurements to see how much my tool is moving while cutting, I'm gonna use a nice and sharp cutting tool without nose radius. Which means, take this away, this is my workpiece, sharp tool. If my tool moves and in and moves left, it will leave a more something like this. And maybe this I can measure movement with the other one I can't. Right, I will install you on the headstock again and let's take measurements. And indeed the finish is absolutely not spectacular. But that was of course not the reason why we did it. Let's say four and a half, six, a bit over eight, eight, nine. I installed the indicator again, just like before, on top of my workpiece. What I see here is a difference of almost three one hundredths of a millimeter. So give and take one thou for the Imperials. I don't think there is much we can do about it. Maybe it comes from the rack here below. Which is of course very hard to film. This one and then here in the darkness you see the little gear that moves the whole carriage. So it could be that there is something wrong with this one, but this investigation will be for a lot of time. Conclusion. The line pattern in my finished parts is still here, but it's way less than it was before. And the taper is also way less than it was before. So it's maybe not a complete success, but also it's not a complete failure.